Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers, the Carb Addiction Doc, and today we're going to try to sort out the confusion between lipids, um, LDL, and cardiovascular disease. And this, I believe, is particularly uh, pertinent in the era of the coronavirus, because we know that of the people that have a horrible outcome from the coronavirus, the most common pre-existing condition is underlying cardiovascular uh, disease and vascular inflammation. And I've got a little bit of speculation. It's way out there, but I want to share this with you. So the assumption that cardiovascular disease is inevitable as we age is so prevalent, has become so prevalent, even since I was in medical school, in our entire medical community, that all the medical community, and now by virtue of that, the population think about is treatment as opposed to prevention. Everything's about therapy, treatment, treatment, these medications. We really need to think more about not having cardiovascular disease as opposed to treating something we erroneously believe is inevitable because we cause most of our cardiovascular disease to ourselves. But most healthcare workers truly believe that, car that carbohydrates are essential to our diet. And therein lies a huge issue. So to, in order to understand the role of car carbohydrates and lipids and cardiovascular disease, let's understand how evolution worked. As we evolved as a mammalian species, not just us, but all mammals, we, all mammals are defined by being warm-blooded. And we have a blood system, and the blood system is aqueous. In other words, it is a water-based system. But part of the evolutionary process depends on fat and the transport of fat in our bodies. Now, fat and water don't mix. So evolutionarily, God and nature came up with a wonderful way of transporting cholesterol and triglycerides, which are fatty, waxy substances that do not dissolve in water or the medium of blood. And evolution devised this ingenious system of water-soluble transport vehicles. Think of it as cars and buses called lipoproteins. And basically what happens is that fat either gets put inside of a little capsule of protein and proteins can either have a fatty side or an aqueous side, a watery side. And if their fatty side is pointing inward and their watery side is, pro is pointing outward, they can float in that water or the fat can be combined with a protein, something called globulin, and the triglycerides or the fat can be transported free in the bloodstream attached to these protein molecules. So they are transport molecules, an ingenious idea. And what we human beings have called some of these fatty transport molecules are lipoproteins. Fat and protein combinations. And one of those, one of the most common ones that is stable for a long period of time in the blood system is called LDL, low density lipoprotein. And the LDL can either be empty or full of fat as it transports fat around our body from fat cells to the liver to the other tissues to the brain. So LDL is just a transport molecule for fat because of the nature of our blood. The problem is that both cholesterol and that fat has vital importance in the human body. And it's a myriad of vital important things in the human body. The human body is a complex system, but it's actually very simplistic in terms of how it functions. So cholesterol is critically important as an integral component of the fluidity of every cell membrane, particularly the cell membranes of our brain. About 30% of the constituents uh, fat in the cell membrane is cholesterol in a healthy brain. But cholesterol has to be delivered to that brain because not much can be made locally on site in those brain cells. And LDL transports that lipid, that cholesterol, to the brain. That's why people on a low-fat diet or people on statins are much more likely to develop dementia and Alzheimer's. Okay, So uh, the delivery of fat is very, very important to cellular function. But it's also critically important for host immune defenses. The immune system depends 
on LDL to patch defense, particularly in the vascular system, LDL is the spackle that the uh, a clotting cascade that the immune system uses to repair damaged blood vessels. And if you've got an ongoing damage to the blood vessels, you need more and more LDL to patch those vessels. We'll get back to that in a little bit. But the LDL and cholesterol is used for cell repair, for antioxidant damage prevention, and as a carrier molecule for fat-soluble vitamins and coenzyme Q10, which is important. It's an integral component of muscle function. Cholesterol is also very important in cells as the precursor substrate, the universal um, steroid substrate for estrogen, for testosterone, for cortisol, for human growth hormone, for thyroid hormone, T3, T4, for cholecalciferol that combines with vitamin D, and for bile, which is responsible for the absorption of fat from our gut. So all these things play an integral role in the human body, particularly in immune surveillance, in tissue repair, and the, in, in the immune system. Sadly, however, sadly, 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 uneducated, poorly educated doctors, the mainstream medical system, behaves as if the causal role of LDL and cholesterol is exclusively in atherosclerosis sclerosis, or plaques that form in blood vessels that cause heart attacks and strokes. While really, when you look at the literature, we don't understand. There is no real understanding of the pathogenesis of degenerative, va degenerative vascular disease. In fact, I will tell you that we know more about sugar and nicotine causing, 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 causing vascular disease than there is any evidence that cholesterol or lipids, LDL lipids, cause vascular disease. There's no doubt that several of the components of LDL cholesterol are present in that plaque. We can measure them, we can see them, and that's where the confusion happens. But by no means can you assume that there is that those lipids are causal to the disease. There is no evidence that those lipids cause disease. There's strong evidence that glucose and nicotine cause that disease. So in fact, we absolutely know that those LDL and cholesterols mediate vascular repair and healing. Now, let's come full circle. Why is that critically important? Because vasculitis, inflammation of the blood vessel system, makes us increasingly vulnerable to severity of disease when we get an infection. And we are currently living in the COVID-19 era, where this awful virus takes advantage of a distracted sense of immune diversion or where the immune system is causing inflammation throughout the body, the COVID virus takes advantage of a depressed or an otherwise utilized or an activated inflamed immune system and is much, much, much more aggressive. So not only are we sitting with the background heart, um, heart diseases that we've always lived with in the last 40 or 50 years, nicotine and carbohydrate-based, now the greater immediate threat, the greater immediate threat is the fact that we cannot respond adequately or that the COVID virus is taking advantage of inflammation, but our immune system cannot react effectively to that virus. And people with cardiovascular disease not as a cause, but as an associated disease, are suffering far worse outcomes and are dying much more frequently than people that do not have cardiovascular disease. Now, here's the question, and I don't know the answer, but the data, the evidence, the statistics will be proven. And here's a, something I would love to know. I would love to know. What is the prevalence of people with severe COVID infection or dying of COVID disease who are also on statins. Of course, the pro-statin lobbyist would argue that they're on a statin because of cardiovascular disease. But that is not necessarily true. There are plenty of people out there that have been put on statins by their doctors because their LDL is high. Not because they have cardiovascular disease. Okay, so this is a critically important thing. I, for example, am fat adapted in ketosis. My CAC score is an egg, it's zero. So my cardiovascular risk is absent, but my 
um, LDL is over 140. So if I went to a traditional doctor, they would immediately put me on a statin. And there are plenty of folks out there who are on statins because their LDL is high, but they, had, they do not have measurable cardiovascular disease. And here's the question. I would love to know, of the people that are dying and getting severely sick on COVID, what percentage of them is on a statin yet has no other evidence of cardiovascular disease? My suspicion, my intuition is that by being on a statin, you are exposing yourself to a higher risk without benefit from that statin of a more severe outcome to COVID. Now, I'm not ready to advocate the removal of the statin until we have the evidence. But I think that's a very, 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 very important epidemiologic question that has to be answered sooner than later. Don't stop your statin yet, but please, please, please push to get that evidence. It may not be the cardiovascular disease exclusively. It may also be people on a statin because LDL, those lipids, have critically important immune function. And if you suppress your immune system by a variety of different ways, usually with medications or disease, COVID has a more severe effect. And statins may, because they are so prevalent, so many adults, especially older adults, are on statins, they may also contribute significantly to severity of disease. Question. Please, 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 let's get the answer.